Our first presenter is a world-renowned poet and professor of English and creative writing at Emory University, my alma mater. Uh, Natasha Trethewey served two terms as the 19th Poet Laureate of the United States, and she won the Pulitzer Prize for her collection, Native Guard, among many other honors. Librarian of Congress, James Billington, once noted that, quote, her poems dig beneath the surface of history, personal or communal, from childhood or from a century ago, to explore the human struggles that we all face. Tonight, we look forward to hearing how she will dig beneath the surface of her poem, Enlightenment, to enlighten us in just five minutes. Please welcome Natasha Trethewey. Thank you, and good evening. I began work on my most recent collection of poems, Thrall, with an exploration of enlightenment thinking, particularly notions of racial difference and hierarchy, the roots of white supremacy, which were first codified by enlightenment philosophers such as Kant and Hume. Indeed, it was Thomas Jefferson who, in Notes on the State of Virginia, called for a kind of comparative anatomy. He proposed that if you were to cut open the Negro, you could ascertain what he believed to be the root of black inferiority. In considering the Enlightenment, I wanted also to examine the ongoing, deeply ingrained, and often unexamined contemporary notions of racial difference and hierarchy, manifest not only in the culture at large, but also in the intimate relationships in families, as with my beloved father, my white parent. My father took me first to Monticello, Jefferson's home, over 30 years ago. A lot has changed there since then. It is now the official position of the Jefferson Foundation that Thomas Jefferson fathered several of Sally Hemings' children. Whereas it was once taboo to even bring up the issue, now the docent will mention it prominently in the tour. Thus, the conversations one might overhear at Monticello have also changed, though the ideas undergirding them more often have not. Enlightenment. In the portrait of Jefferson that hangs at Monticello, he is rendered two-toned, his forehead white with illumination, a lit bulb, the rest of his face in shadow, darkened as if the artist meant to contrast his bright knowledge, its dark subtext. By 1805, when Jefferson sat for the portrait, he was already linked to an affair with his slave. Against a backdrop blue and ethereal, a wash of paint that seems to hold him in relief, Jefferson gazes out across the centuries, his lips fixed as if he's just uttered some final word. The first time I saw the painting, I listened as my father explained the contradictions, how Jefferson hated slavery, though out of necessity, my father said, had to own slaves. That his moral philosophy meant he could not have fathered those children. Would have been impossible, my father said. For years, we debated the distance between word and deed. I'd follow my father from book to book, gathering citations, listen as he named, like a field guide to Virginia, each flower and tree and bird, as if to prove a man's pursuit of knowledge is greater than his shortcomings, the limits of his vision. I did not know then the subtext of our story, that my father could imagine Jefferson's words made flesh in my flesh, the improvement of the blacks in body and mind in the first instance of their mixture with the whites, or that my father could believe he'd made me better. 
When I think of this now, I see how the past holds us captive, its beautiful ruin etched on the mind's eye. My young father, a rough outline of the old man he's become, needing to show me the better measure of his heart, an equation writ large at Monticello. That was years ago. Now we take in how much has changed. Talk of Sally Hemings, someone asking, how white was she? Parsing the fractions as if to name what made her worthy of Jefferson's attentions. A near white quadroon mistress, not a plain black slave. Imagine stepping back into the past, our guide tells us then. And I can't resist whispering to my father, this is where we split up. I'll head around to the back. When he laughs, I know he's grateful I've made a joke of it. This history that links us, white father, black daughter, even as it renders us other to each other. <laughs> <laughs>